I know you already know what happens at the Stellar Angle of Lewis. On this video, I'm actually here to tell you why you don't get it right, why you don't score 10 over 10, 20 over 20, and why you don't even remember it, even with the popular Memonix rat plant. Okay, so make sure you watch this video to the end. I promise you it's not going to be so long. See you soon. So this is the first reason why you don't get um, the question what is the anatomy landmark of Stenner Angle of Lewis? This is why you don't get that question right. You just go straight to the point. You don't make it in a sentence. You just say bifurcation of the trachea. You just say aortic arc. And so what's happening in aortic arc? You forget to say beginning and the end of the aortic arc. So you don't make it like a sentence. You only state it there. So this is one of the things why you fail it. Some lecturers can still mark it like that, but I don't think the lecturers might be getting it all right there. And for viva sake and for your simple chase, make sure you make it in a sentence because professors will be viva in you, medical students, <laughs> anatomy students. In your school, you might not be doing viva, but for some schools, they do viva. So make sure you put this in a sentence. Now, the second thing why you don't get it right is some of you just go and write rat plant, this popular memonics, R A T P A L N T. You don't state what rat plant is, you just write rat plant. And few of your lecturers are supposed to know rat plant with you. Please, rat plant is a memonics that some persons created for you to remember it. And from rat plant, it's just R A T P L A N T. It's just eight things they are telling you from rat plant. So, but we have more than eight. There is this professor that said <laughs> there were about 40 things, 35 things. I was like, ah, 35. Please, though, in the course of this video, if there's something you know that I didn't mention, please drop on the comment section. You just can't scroll down, 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 and you will see the comment section. Please comment so that other medical and health related students can also benefit from this video, from what you will be sharing. Thank you very much. But for this video, it's only 14 that I have in my head though, that my wonderful Cherusia taught me. So I'm going to be telling you and showing you with this my small model here. Make sure you are with your stationaries, you are with something to just. Now the sternal angle of Lewis was named after Antonio Lewis and that's why it's sternal angle of Lewis. You get it, good. This is the manibrum, this is the body of the sternum and this is the cephoid process. So the anterior angle formed by the junction of the manibrum and the body of the sternum, that's this line, this piece, is the sternal angle of Lewis. It is very helpful for dissection when you want to dissect. If you're looking for the second rib already, you know that you've got into the sternal angle. It also helps doctors or those that are um, um, clinicians when they want to do surgery so that they don't puncture um, the wrong organ or whatever. So this is the significance of the sternal angle of Lewis. So um, if they ask you significance of sternal angle of Lewis, you can also say all this anatomical landmarks. It helps you know where, it helps you know where, it helps you know where this particular thing is located. You've got in that. So that's about sternal angle of Lewis. So I'm going to be taking you back to where we were. So we can now start telling you the 14 anatomical events that happens at the sternal angle of Lewis. Let's go. All right, so we're back here. I'm going to start with your rat plant. That's the rat plant that you know. But I'm going to be correcting you. You're not just going to be saying second rib, um, just like that, aortic arc, good. So we're going to be starting with arrow. Arrow is the second rib is located in the sternal angle of Lewis. Good, good. You're going to get one mark for that. Now the next one, A. The A is not just aortic arc. The beginning and the end of the aortic arc is located at the sternal angle of Lewis. Or you can say um, the sternal angle of Lewis marks the beginning and the end of the aortic arc. So good. We're going to T. T is the bifurcation of trachea into two principal bronchial um, is located at the sternal angle of Lewis, or you can turn it the other way around. That the sternal angle of Lewis marks the bifurcation of the trachea, that's the carina, into two principal bronchia. Good. Now, the next thing is we've said rats. Okay, we're going to plant. Plant. P, you know, P is a um, pulmonary trunk, so you cannot just say pulmonary trunk. So you say the bifurcation of the pulmonary trunk into two pulmonary artery occurs um, at the sternal angle of Lewis. So let's move to the next thing, L. Okay, so you don't just say ligamentum arterosum, but the uh, ligamentum arterosum lies at the level of the sternal angle of Lewis. You've gotten that good. The next thing is A, good. Azygos vein drains into the um, superior vena cava 
this occurs at the stellar angle of Lewis. You've gotten it, like put it in a sentence. Don't just write as I goes vein. Hey, what's happening to as I goes vein? Is it located there? What's happening there? It drains into the superior vena cover. We've talked about A. So the next thing is N. N, N is nerve plexus for your memonics. But to put it in a sentence, you say the cardiac plexus lies at the sternal angle of Lewis. Do you get You know what plexus is? Network of nerves. Good. So the cardiac plexus lies at the sternal angle of what? Lewis. So the next thing is T. T is thoracic duct. If it's you, you just write thoracic duct. Please don't just write thoracic duct. That sentence is a very huge sentence. So thoracic duct cannot just give you your one mark. It's going to give you 0.25 mark. <laughs> So thoracic dot, you should say the crossing of the thoracic dot occurs at the sternal angle of Lewis. Or you could say the passage of the thoracic dot from right to left behind the esophagus occurs at the sternal angle of Lewis. And your one mark will just be waiting for you. Or if it's two marks or if it's three, you get your full mark than just saying thoracic dot. So I've said the eight that you know. Good. So I'm going to be adding how many more because I told you we have 14 for you on this video. How many is that? So we're going to be adding six more to it. Okay, so this is the first one I'll be adding. The first one is, you don't just write superior and inferior mediastinum, no. You will say the sternal angle of Lewis marks the division of the superior mediastinum from the inferior mediastinum. I think I should be doing mediastinum too after um, in some videos. Just make your request. I'm going to be dropping many anatomy lessons for you to recall. So the um, sternal angle of Lewis marks the division of the superior mediastinum from the inferior mediastinum. Good. Another thing is posteriorly to the sternal angle of Lewis, that's where you see T4 and T5 vertebra. So how do we put this in a sentence? Okay, we could say the sternal angle of Lewis posteriorly marks the T4 and T5 vertebra. And you're good to go. How many do we have now? We have 10 on the table. Okay, let's take this rib one, rib two. You know the second costal cartilage will still have to be on that rib. Good. So the center angle of Lewis marks the second pair of the costal cartilage on each side of the what? Sternum. Sternum is here. So on each side of the sternum, we have the um, second pair of the costal cartilage. You got that right? Good. It's kind of different from rib. <laughs> Don't say Jimama is trying to bring out more points. But they said they're up to 30 now. So <laughs> we're trying to get it out for you. So juicy. Okay. So the next thing is the loop of the left recurrent laryngeal nerve around the aortic arc occurs at the sternal angle of Lewis. Let me recap. I said the loop of the left recurrent laryngeal nerve around the aortic arc occurs at the sternal angle of Lewis. And what else again, again, again? All right, the termination of the pre-tracheal fascia and the pre-vertebral fascia occurs at the sternal angle of Lewis. Um, I think I'm forgetting one. Hey, why should I forget this one? Because um, when our students were doing Viva here, yeah, this man actually asked me the question that the base of the heart is at where? You know it's at T45. So it's still at the sternal angle of Lewis. So the sternal angle of Lewis marks the upper limits of the base of the heart. So you guys, that's the 14 anatomical landmarks that occurs at the sternal angle of Lewis. Um, if you are telling me thank you, it's not just enough. Please make sure you have this offhand, you have it in your heart, you don't need to cram it. Um, I should be doing another video relating to another um, vertebra, like another anatomical landmark. You should be getting ready for that. I might be dropping the mnemonics, or I might just be showing you how to recall by visualizing. You get it. So this one, because you know the sternal angle is around the second rib, so whatever is happening, let me take off this lungs. So whatever is happening in this place, you should know it's at the sternal angle of Lewis. So you guys, I think this is where this video will end. I'm a little bit exhausted. I don't know if you found that my voice is kind of crack. Um, I actually went for a program, so that's why I lost my voice. I am hearing this cool ass voice. So you guys, please just bear with me. And this is where this video will end. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, like my video, share to your friends, share to any medical students you know they should be needing this video. That's all. Bye.